Tell your neighbors, I choose to be free. Say, I choose to be free. Yeah. We're going to make one big choir. Come on, clap your hands like this. Come on. Say, I'm free indeed in Christ. I'm free. Say, I'm free indeed yeah. in Christ. What's blind? Tomorrow at your job, say, I choose to be afraid. That cancer scared, it ain't going to mean a thing. Because you're walking in healing. You're walking in victory. Why? Because you're choosing to be free. Free from worrying. Free from fear. For God has not given us what? Choose to be Yeah. But of a sound mind, say, choose to be yeah. Choose to be free. Come on, let's lift it up. Come on. Say, I choose to be free. 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 Yes, choose to be free, choose to be free, no chance of holding me, I choose to be free, yeah, hey, 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 say I choose to be free, come on, let's go to the islands, hey, I choose to be free now. Oh, say I 
Hallelujah, 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 
I'm free from financial bondage. I'm free from all of those so-called generational curses. I'm free from any ailment on my body. I'm free. I'm free. Diabetes has no place. Cancer has no place. Nothing is impossible or too hard. So we say hallelujah. 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 Spirit of expectancy. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, say freedom, freedom. Everybody say freedom. Hey, freedom. Say freedom, freedom. Say freedom, freedom. It's free, it's free indeed. Oh, the sun sets free, it's free indeed. Oh, the sun sets free, it's free indeed. Oh, the sun sets free, it's free
shackles, no more chains. I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. No more shackles, no more chains. I'm free. Cause whom the sun sets free is free indeed, Take what's told and make it new and I'll sing on oh, burning me, let me see what eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard. I'm ready, Lord. I'll sing come oh, burning me, let me see what eyes haven't seen. Ears haven't heard, I'm ready, Lord. Oh, 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 you are a consuming fire. How could I not get burned by you? Oh, oh, oh. desire you take what's told and make it new and I'll sing come burning me let me see what eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard I'm ready Lord I'll sing come oh burning me let me see but eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard. I'm ready, Lord. Yeah. You are a vibrant light. How could I take my eyes off you? Whoa. Surrender and heart abandoned. How could my feet not run to you? When I saw you coming, I came running to crash right into you. Then you wrapped me in flames, and now I know it's true. Come, burning me, let me see what eyes haven't seen. Ears haven't heard, I'm ready, Lord. I'll sing, come, oh, burning me. Let me see what eyes haven't seen. And ears haven't heard, I'm ready, Lord. Oh, it's a fire, it's a fire, and it's burning hotter. I'm standing on the altar, yeah, it's a fire. 
After following you for so many years, we're still so desperate for more and more of you. I pray that you'll just fill our hearts with your Holy Spirit and your holy fire. I pray that you'll dwell in us and that you'll remain, God. We'll give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. We worship you, God. We glorify you because you are so worthy. Dwell in our hearts today, God. Let us leave here changed. Let us not be the same. Change us now. Change us now. Change us now. In Jesus' name, amen. you're doing tonight come on let's just lift up those hands and from the depths of your heart give him praise tonight give him praise tonight lord we just want to say thanks a million for your grace thank you for your love thank you for being kind gracious we just declare tonight there is none like you father we're deeply grateful our hearts are full of gratitude tonight. Lord, it's such an amazing thing to see you draw people from all walks of life to come down here in the inner city of Jackson and hear a word 
not a word from a man but a word from you Lord and we promise that we're going to do something with this we promise that it's not going to fall on empty soil we promise that it's going to bear much fruit for your glory for your kingdom I just want you to take this moment right now just take your eyes off of everything and everyone and just say Lord if I was the only one in this room it would be more than enough come on just lift up those hands and I'm going to give you just a couple of minutes to pray in the Holy Spirit what you get out of a service is what you put into it you can't make withdrawals where you have no investments right now I want to give you about two minutes to make a serious investment in the kingdom of God through worship and prayer take your eyes off of everybody take your eyes off of the time the place where you are Jesus 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 I decree over you tonight that your walk with God is even going to be far greater than than what it was and just a second ago your walk with God in this week is going to be amazing that they're not going to be enough words in the dictionary to explain what God is doing in your life in this season and I'm talking to the hungry ones I'm talking to those who came to participate not people who came to spectate God will always meet you at the point of your desperation God will always meet you at the point of your hunger God will always meet you at the point of your thirst. Take your eyes off of everybody right now. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the ancient of days, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There is none like unto him. Lord, we praise you in this place. We acknowledge you in this place. We lift up the name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus that sweet name that glorious name that awesome name maroda lebra kata lebra nanda inanato marada leke brananda leke bra soto branaka badanda lebro zete branaka ladale branaka let your glory fill this place now ah. Let your power fall in this place now, now. Come on, let's worship. Holy fire. Rest in this place. Ah. Holy fire, rest on these grounds. Rest on this ground. Ah. Holy fire, holy fire, holy fire. Won't you rest now, now? Holy fire, holy fire, rest on this ground. It's a holy ground. It's a holy ground. It's holy ground, holy ground, holy ground, holy ground. Yeah, yeah. You know, darling. Somebody shout Holy Ghost Have your way Have your way Have your way now Have your way now Have your way Have your way It's a holy ground. It's a holy ground, holy ground. It's a holy ground, holy ground, yeah. It's a holy ground. 
it's a holy ground your holy ground we're standing on holy ground somebody shout hallelujah how many of you believe i don't want to be the same after tonight i said i'm coming with an attitude i don't want to be the same after tonight I can't afford to be the same after tonight. From glory to glory. Lord, we want to say thank you for your presence. Thank you for your glory. Come on, one more time. Lift up two hands towards him. I hear a sound. Brother Inatane.
Jesus. How powerful is the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. How sweet is the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you all the praise tonight. Have your way in this place. Have your way in this place. And the whole church says, Amen, 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 Amen. Come on, turn to two or three people and say you're in the right place tonight. Go ahead, give somebody a high five and say you're in the right place tonight. Tell them your life will never be the same after tonight. Glory, glory, glory. Praise God. How y'all doing, church? I say, how y'all doing? Glory, feel free. This is your father's house. I said, this is your father's house. Amen and amen. We want to welcome everybody to M633 Church. A church for, for everyone. A church that decided that we're going to do what we need to do based on impact. We were not just going to be another church on the block doing church stuff. We want to create an environment where people can encounter the Lord in a very profound way and go out there and make a huge difference for the kingdom of God. That's, that's all it's all about. So we're stripping away all the complexities and narrowing this whole thing down and making it as simple as possible. Say after me, come. Say it louder, say come. Encounter Jesus. Go and make a difference. That's it. That's our assignment here. Can somebody say hallelujah? We want to welcome our online viewers from around the world. If you don't mind, kind of specify a few of the places where you're tuning in from so we can acknowledge you. It's going to be an amazing night tonight. I said it's going to be an amazing, who am I talking to? I said it's going to be an amazing night tonight. There's something in the kingdom of God about how to respond to the prophetic word. The same angel that came to Mary came to Zachariah, the father of John the Baptist, and when he told him what God was about to do, because they had been barren for so many years, you could sense from his response the hesitation. And you know, when the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob speaks, you have to have the appropriate response. Just his mere hesitation, the angel looked at him and said, huh, you're going to have to become dumb until this prophecy comes to pass. But when that same angel spoke to Mary, notice her response, be it unto me according to your word. When the angel gave her what we will call a no point reference kind of miracle, never in the history of humanity has a woman given birth without the involvement of a man. And yet she said, be it unto me. So faith deals with how open your heart is to receive. How quick and prompt. When the angel came to stare the water, it wasn't the second person who got in who got healed. It was the first person who stepped in. And so as the word comes tonight, it's up to you. How you choose to respond is how God is going to meet you on the wings of your own response. So in this church, there is no such thing as being passive, being cute, and being civilized. You have to learn to respond. I say, respond. Turn to two people and say, respond appropriately. You got to have the right response. Because all it takes is a word. I said, all it takes is a word. 
take up your bed and walk. All it takes is a word. Stretch your hand. All it takes is a word. So how you respond to this word is how God is going to meet with you. How many of you are ready to meet with God tonight? I want to ask that again. How many of you are, are ready to meet with God tonight? Amen. So we welcome our online viewers. You are so welcome. This is M633 Church. We're excited about what God is doing right here in Jackson, Mississippi. And um, we know that God is going to meet us in a very powerful way tonight. Can somebody say amen? All right, people. Um, did you come with your Bibles? If you came with your Bibles, let me see your hands up. You came with your Bibles. All right, from now on, you must come with your what? The screen is not going to do it for you. You have to come with your Bibles and look into your Bibles. Amen. Let us not get too contemporary for God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, this month, God has given us a theme for this church, and it's called the faith that overcomes the world. The faith that overcomes the world. That is the all-encompassing series for the month of November. The end goal of this is to radically develop in you a spirit of dominion. Okay? That's the end result of this series. To radically develop in you and I a spirit of dominion. A spirit of dominion. Somebody say spirit of dominion. Say it like you mean it. A spirit of dominion. Okay, maybe there's an exercise I need to do here to help you all understand how we function in this house. Should we do that exercise? Somebody please find me a towel. All right, let's see. Um, uh, you all just follow this, this instruction, all right? Everybody please stand up. Too slow. Everybody please sit down. too slow. Stand up. Sit down. Raise your left hand. Put it down. Right hand. Put it down. Stand up. Sit down. Say praise the Lord. Say hallelujah. Act like you're soldiers in the house of God. Act like you're soldiers. Amen. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Okay. All right. Are you ready for the word? Okay. Oh, thank you. You are giving me all kind of gifts today. People are signing from everywhere. Amen. Praise God. All right. So what is the series for this month? Who can remind me of it? Who can remind me of the series for the month of November? The faith that overcomes the world. And what is the end result of that? To radically develop a spirit of dominion. Can somebody say amen? So, under this subtitle, I want to talk about righteousness by faith. Righteousness by faith. And we're going to be looking at Romans chapter number 1, verses 16 and 17. All of those of you online, please make sure that you have your Bibles. Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. I'm reading this in the King James Version. And it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Somebody say, I'm not ashamed. Somebody say, I'm not ashamed. You know, not long ago, we were actually in South Carolina where we had to uh, do the eulogy over our dear sister, Tomei. And at the end of that, um, Facebook, I don't know why Facebook hasn't posted it yet, is one of the most powerful soul-winning videos that we've ever created. And we want to make sure that everybody gets a hold of that video and sends it out to anybody that you know needs Jesus as their savior. But at the end of that video, I was asking the people, why is it that people tell us to close our eyes when it's time to give the altar call? What are we ashamed of? What are we ashamed of? That we literally have to close our eyes in a dark light so that people can surrender their life to the Lord Jesus. We are offering people the best thing that would ever happen to them and we are telling them, close your eyes. Isn't that something? That's how church messes people up. If somebody's going to give you the greatest gift in your life, is that time to tell everybody, close your eyes? No. That's time you open your eyes 
and people need to step out boldly. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me in the presence of men, I'll be ashamed of you in my father's presence. I hope that culture changes in the body of Christ. But in Romans chapter 1 verse 16, it says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So I wanted you to see that because this is really important. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Everybody say the gospel of Christ. I'm not ashamed of it. Why? Because in it lies the power of God that saves. So God lodges his power in a gospel. And as you unravel that package, the package of the gospel, the power of God is released from within it. All right? But now I want you to look at verses 17, please. Because this is where we're going. It says, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So, in the gospel, you have the power of God. In the gospel, is the power of God that saves to everyone who, believe it, who believes. But in the same gospel, there is a revelation of the righteousness of God. In the same gospel, there is what? A revelation of the righteousness of God that is revealed from faith to faith as it is written. The just shall live by faith. So in the gospel, you have the power of God. In the same gospel, there's a revelation of the righteousness of God. And this righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written. The just shall live by faith. Now, brothers and sisters, say after me, the just shall live by faith. Say a little louder, the just shall live by faith. Who are the just ones? The just ones are those who have been declared righteous, the righteous ones. How do they live? They live by faith. How do they live? They live by faith. So faith is the predominant lifestyle of the believer. Faith is the predominant lifestyle of the new creation in Christ. I want to say that again. Faith is the predominant DNA of the new creation in Christ. Why? Because the just shall live by it. Invariably, what that also means is that without faith, the just will die. There is only one way to live in the kingdom, by faith. There's only one way to live, by faith. So faith is not that thing you use when you're going through a problem and then you want to overcome your problem. And then once you overcome your problem, you take it off as a jacket until the next problem shows up. You have to have a plan of developing your faith. You have to have a plan of developing your faith. This is one of the biggest crises I see in the church. Untested faith is fake. Untested faith is fake. It is only tested faith that remains authentic. If you don't know how to use your faith to overcome an ordinary headache, <laughs> why plead in vain when cancer shows up? Why need a miracle then? Untested faith is fake. Tested faith is authentic. That is why it's a lifestyle. Come on, everybody says it's a lifestyle. That means even five years from now, I'm still developing my faith. Ten years from now, I'm still working on my faith. And from time to time, I try out the authenticity of my faith. Stay with me. Let us look at this scripture again in whew. let's look at it in the Phillips translation if you don't mind. Okay, the e, okay, we've got it. The E R O V, the easy to read translation. No, keep it go back, easy to read translation. All right. Okay? The E R O V, the easy to read. Brothers and sisters, if you don't mind, let's read together the count of two, please. One to go. The good news shows how God 
makes people right with himself. God's way of making people right begins and ends with faith. As the scripture says, the one who is right with God by faith will live forever. What is righteousness? Righteousness is right standing with God. Oh boy, you, you got to get this. I say righteousness is what? Right standing with God. But it's even more than that. Righteousness gives you and I the very standing that Jesus had with the Father. Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to here tonight. I say so righteousness doesn't just make me right with God. Righteousness gives me the standing that Jesus himself had with the Father while he was here on earth. The good news shows how God makes people right with himself. That's righteousness. God's way of doing that begins with faith. In order for God to initiate this righteousness with God. The doorway into that whole world begins with faith. Continues in faith. And must finish in faith. So in the gospel of Jesus, there's a revelation of the righteousness of God that is revealed from faith to faith. It's a process that begins in faith, continues in faith, concludes in faith. Let's look at this in the Philips translation. In the Philips translation, Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, I see it as the very power of God Working for the salvation of everyone who believes it, both Jew and Greek. But I also see in it God's plan for imparting righteousness to men. A process begun and continued by their faith. So this is what God is saying. If faith starts this journey, then faith must continue this journey and faith must end this journey. If you are a fish that was meant to live in water, you have to live in water. If that's how God designed it, if that's how God began it, you can't get, one, you know, you can't get tired one day and say, you know what, I'm tired of living in water. I want to live on land like all those humans on land. And that's what happens to God's people. The thing that faith is a jacket you take off when you feel like it and a jacket you put on when you feel like it. It's a way of life. In fact, what God is saying to us, man of God, is this. That when God imparted his righteousness to you. Remember, when you became born again, God transfused, transmitted, imparted into your spirit his righteousness. You get it? He imparted to you and I his righteousness. How did he do it? By faith. Stay with me. Stay with me. Let's look at this in the New Living Translation. This good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. This is accomplished from start to finish. How? By faith. So what God is saying to us is if righteousness is imparted to you and if the process of doing that originated through faith, then faith becomes the compass through which all of your life is navigated on the seas of life. If faith enabled that to happen, faith must finish it. That's what God is saying. All right. Let's get into this. Look at Romans. Sorry, let, let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, sorry. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 21. If you're there, let me hear you say, I'm there. Say it louder, church. Say, I'm there. I'm there. All right, let's read at the count of two, please. One, two, go. For he had made him to be seen for us who knew no sin, that we might be made 
the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Right? So think about it this way. Jesus was made seen so that you and I might be made the righteousness of God. So if Jesus was made seen, how was he made seen? He was made seen without sin. When the Father took the iniquity of all of us, the sins of the whole world, in John 1, 29, it says, Behold the Lamb that taketh away the sins of the whole world. So the Father took the sins of the whole world and placed it on his own Son. So he was made seen with my sin. Why? So that you and I might be made the righteousness of God. The question I have for you tonight is this. Is God trying to make you righteous? Or has God already made you righteous? Talk to me church. I need a responsive church. Has God, is God trying to make you righteous? Or has God already made you righteous? If God has made you righteous, why are you still working too hard to please him? Why are you striving to earn his mercy and his grace? Why are you struggling to earn it? I, I thought you were already made right with God. Who am I talking to? He, he made you right with himself. Because you see, righteousness is not something you and I can earn. It's called the gift of righteousness. What did he give to me? Did he give me the righteousness of my uncle, the righteousness of my niece, the righteousness of my granddaddy, the righteousness of Abraham, the righteousness of David, the righteousness of Moses? Whose righteousness did he give to me? The righteousness of God. So how righteous am I? I am as righteous as the one who gave it to me. Don't worry, I'm going to deal with your faith. I'm going to deal with the faith crisis tonight. I'm getting at something. So that's why some of us will pray, Lord, renew a right spirit within me. Ah, uh ah, -uh. no, 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 no. That's a prayer for David. He has already made you right. Oh. I, I do not need to ask God to renew a right spirit within me. And I tell you what, righteousness produces in me the rightness of God. That means God has already bequeathed to me the ability to walk right. I can't but walk in rightness with God. I was made. That's my nature. I was made righteous. I was made righteous. I was made righteous. I was made righteous. Can somebody say hallelujah? hallelujah? And this righteousness produces in me a rightness with God. Let's look at a few scriptures here. In Romans chapter 3 verses 21 and 22. Let's look at the easy to read version. Romans chapter 3. Verses 21 and 22, and it says, but God has a way to make people right. And it has nothing to do with the law. He has now shown us that new way which the law and the prophets told us about. God makes people right through their faith in Jesus Christ. He does this for all who believe in Christ. Everyone is the same. I want to read this one more time. God has a way to make people right. And it has nothing to do with the law. He has now shown us that new way which the law and the prophets told us about. God makes people right through their faith in Jesus Christ. Now, let me show you what happened here. Can I have about three men here, please? Three men quickly, just stand out here. 
Let me illustrate this. Three young men, please come down, run down quickly, as quickly as you can. All right. Yes, up here, up here. Come up here where people can see you. I, I want to I dem demonstrate this. Okay, stand according to your height and face me. Stand in a straight line facing me this way. All right. According to your height, know where you're in front. Pastor Jason is in the middle. Pastor Samuel, you're, you're, you're on the th third there. So this is what happened. Let's assume that this is Jesus. Let's assume that I'm the father. Any pleasure I could possibly, humanity could ever bring before the father, Jesus has already provided it. Jesus is representing the whole human race. And Jesus has satisfied the demands of justice. Jesus has paid the ultimate price pleasing the father on behalf of humanity. There is nothing else you and I can do to improve upon what he accomplished. You couldn't pray long enough. You couldn't fast long enough. You, do you guys think you're more holy than the monks? Do you think you practice discipline like the, um, like the Indian, Indian Buddhists? No, those people know how to live holy. Not just holy externally, holy internally in their thoughts. They know how to do it. The work of Christ cannot be improved upon. But he did it not for himself, but for all of humanity. And all I have to do is to put my faith in the one that has already done it. So I don't have to do it. So the relationship that the father has with humanity, for those of us who have put our faith in Christ Jesus, is the relationship that he has with his son. He cannot treat you any less than he treats the firstborn son. That's righteousness. So righteousness doesn't just give me right standing. Before the father gives me the very standing that the son of God has with the father. Come on, we ought to give Jesus a clap offering there. Brothers, go back. Thank you. This is what I'm trying to get you to see. It gives you that standing. So it's telling us there's a righteousness aside from the law of Moses. There's a righteousness that has been revealed that has nothing to do with the Ten Commandments. Is a righteousness apart from the law. But God has a way to make people right and it has nothing to do with the law. He has now shown us that new way which the law and the prophets, although they inquired into it, didn't understand it. God makes people right through faith in Jesus Christ. Let, let me show you another translation here. Let's look at the message translation. I want to read this very quickly. But in our time, something new has been added. What Moses and the prophets witness to all those years has happened. The God setting things right that we read about has become Jesus setting things right for us. And not only for us, but for everyone who believes in him. For there is no difference between us and them in this. Since we've compiled this long and sorry record as sinners, but us and them, and proved that we are utterly incapable of living the glorious lives God wills for us, God did it for us. Out of sheer generosity, he put us in right standing with himself, a pure gift. He got us out of the mess we're in and restored us to where he always wanted us to be, and he did it by means of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody give him praise tonight. Hallelujah. So all that Jesus has accomplished when I put my faith in him, all that he has accomplished becomes mine by right. Say after me, Jesus, the son has pleased the father on my behalf. Say it again. Jesus, the son has pleased the father. On my behalf. He's done it. So the weight of trying to please him. The weight of striving to please him. The weight of trying to earn my way of pleasing God. Through some rituals. 
Jesus lifted that weight off my shoulder. It is no longer a job. It is no longer a show. It is no longer something that is demanded of me. Jesus has lifted it from my shoulder. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere with this message. Now, I want you to notice something in Romans chapter 9 verses 30. Romans chapter 9 verses 30 through 32. I want to show you the difference between some of the things that we're struggling with, even in this generation. Notice what it says. So then, what does all this mean? Everything that I'm talking about here tonight, what does it mean? Here is the irony. The non-Jewish people, non-Jewish people means the Gentiles. The non-Jewish people mean the pagans. The non-Jewish people mean the people that church folks write off. Because they don't look like you, they don't talk like you, they don't walk like you. They got tattoos and, you know, just all kind of punk hair and don't look right, don't talk right. The non-Jews who weren't even pursuing righteousness. Brother, these people were not even chasing after God, not looking after God, didn't even care about anything. They were not pursuing after God. Watch what happened. We're the ones who seized it. The ones we write off, I said, these people are too far-fetched from the grace of God. These are the people seizing it. My take on, on Brother Canyon West is God is going to use him. I said, my take on him is that God is going to use that brother. You don't have to clap. I said, my take on him is that God is going to use him. Why don't we pray for him? I said, why don't we pray for him? Last night, 1,000 souls came to Jesus because of him answering the call. You think he's out of the reach of Jesus? Nobody's out of the reach of Jesus. And God is going to be using far more people like him around the world to bring multitudes to Jesus. Come on, let's give him praise. So then what does all this mean? Here's the irony. The non-Jewish people, the Gentiles, the pagan worshippers who weren't even pursuing righteousness were the ones who seized it. What did they seize? A perfect righteousness that was transferred to them by faith. It was given to them as a gift. Now watch this. Yet Israel, the ones who have the law, the ones who got it from Mount Sinai, yet Israel... Even though pursuing a legal righteousness did not attain to it. And why was that? Because they did not pursue the path of faith. But insisted on pursuing righteousness by works. As if it could be seized another way. There's no other way. They were offended by the means of obtaining it and stumbled after that stumbling stone. So look at the people of God. They were the ones to whom God gave the Ten Commandments. The ones that had the prophets, that had the oracles of God. And for years and years and years, they tried to keep the 667 laws of Moses and failed woefully again and again and again. Because if you break one, you've broken all of them. So the Bible says, but the deeds of the law shall no one be justified before God. So God said, let me make it easy for you. I'm going to accomplish this through my son. And if you put your faith in him, his righteousness becomes your righteousness. You see, when God said, Christ was made sin, who knew no sin, that you and I might be made the righteousness of God. You mean to tell me that I'm made righteous? I'm made righteous. Has God ever used the word like that somewhere else? Yes. He looks at Father Abraham. Okay? He looks at him when his name was still Abraham and he says, listen, I have made you. I'm not trying to make you. I'm not in the process of making you. We're not going to, you know, just throw this out for years. I have already made you the father of nations. Turn to somebody and say, God talks crazy sometimes. The reason why God sounds crazy is because every time he speaks, he must speak from his own capacity. So you're looking at a man who doesn't even have the ability to produce a child. He's important. 
Then you look at his wife who is 90 years old. That's grandmama there. I don't know, I don't know what you think, but that's grandmama. That's, I have never seen a grandmama that old with capacity to conceive a child. And God looks at Abram and looks at Sarah and says, I have made you. I have made, I am not making you. It's already done. It's a done deal. It's a settled case. I have made you. Okay, God, come on. Come on, God. Okay, let's, let's be serious now. Why don't we just say I've made you the father of one child? Why don't we even say, okay, I've made you the father of twins? He said, I've made you the father. Of many. How do you look at his circumstance? How do you look at his current circumstance? How does that word even line up with his present circumstance? There's such a dissonance. The difference is like between light and darkness. The man lacks the capacity to give birth to one child. One seed. And God is here talking crazy. I have made you the father of many nations. Many, not, 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 not just the United States of America, not, not just Nigeria, not just Ghana, not just Kenya, not just Mongolia, not just Thailand, not just China, not just Singapore. I have made you the father of many. Out of what? So when did he become the father? When God said it or when he finally gave birth to a seed? When do you become righteous? See, this is your problem. You're trying to match your experiences with the word. The word trumps your experiences. The word supers. If you keep looking at yourself, you will never look righteous. Never. And that is why you continue to work so hard to earn what God has given to you as a gift. So you say, okay, so, so where do we start? We have to start from the place of faith. God, what you said, I don't look like it. God, I know me. I know my frailties. I know my weaknesses. I know my problems. I know the darkness in me. But like Peter, nevertheless, at your word, at your word, God, at your word, if you said it, then I am it. In other words, God is saying, would you even take a step back and just agree with what God said? Let's start there. Would you agree that what God said you are, you are? We can't even move forward until we agree. Because two cannot walk together except they are agree. That is the problem. So instead of believing what God said, you're busy running around trying to work your own righteousness. This is why so many people come to church unworthy. They come to church undeserving. They they don't even have the freedom to worship God. They feel bound. They feel chained. They feel oppressed. Because they have no idea what Jesus has done for them on the cross. He has lifted the weight of sin. He has lifted the guilt of sin. He has lifted the punishment for sin completely off of your shoulder. And so the response now is, Lord, I agree. That's faith. That's faith. Stay with me. I want to show you something. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8. I'm reading this quickly from the King James Version. For by grace are ye saved. How? Through faith. How did you get saved? Church, talk to me. How did you get saved? So faith began the process of your salvation yes for by grace are you saved how through faith and that not of yourselves it is a gift from God or a gift of God so how did I get saved by faith let's look at Galatians chapter 3 verses 2 and 3 Galatians chapter 3 verses 2 and 3 and also verses 5 stay with me this only I want to learn from you this is in the New King James Version Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? It reminds me of the story in Acts chapter 19 when Paul met these 12 uh, disciples that were saved but had not received the gift of the Holy Ghost. He said, 
in what baptism were you baptized? He says, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? They said, we've never even heard there's a Holy Ghost. You notice what he said? He said, have you received? It's all about receiving. It's not something you work for. It's something you receive. They said, we haven't even heard. So what did Paul do? He told them about the Holy Spirit, laid hands on them, and they all got filled. All 12 of them. So he's asking this in Galatians 3, 2. This only would I learn from you. Did you receive the spirit by obeying the law? Or did you receive it by hearing the hearing of faith? How did you receive the Holy Ghost? Look at what he says. Are you so foolish? Having begun by faith. Having begun in the spirit. Having begun the right way. You were on track. How did you get off track? Having begun in the spirit. Are you now made perfect by the flesh? Then he asks again. In verses 5. Therefore, he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? How does God perform miracles? How many of you tonight came for a miracle? How many of you online came for a miracle? How does God perform miracles? By the hearing of faith. When the gospel is preached, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because in it lies the power. So when you believe the gospel, the power is revealed. When you believe the good news, the power flows. That's how God brings miracles. Now let's look at this. In New Living Translation. This will make sense to you right now. Galatians 3, 2 and 3 and 5 in the New Living Translation. Let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by obeying the law of Moses? Of course not. You received the Spirit because you believed the message you heard about Christ. That's why you received the Holy Spirit. Why are you now trying to become perfect by your own human effort? That's what the Bible is saying. I ask you again, does God give you the Holy Spirit and work miracles among you because you obey the law? Of course not. It is because you believe the message you heard about Jesus Christ. It's the message. It's the message. So the Bible is telling us in the message is a revelation of the righteousness of God. But that process begins by faith. So this is what happens. When a sinner comes to Christ and confesses his sin before the Lord and says, God, I want you as my savior. God takes away his sinful DNA, his sinful nature, and supplants it with the nature of his righteousness. In order for that process to be materialized, he has to receive it by faith. But if faith begins that new life, then you must continue that new life by faith. You must stay on the track of faith to continue to enjoy the righteousness that God has given to you. You can't get, get to a point where you say, you know what? I'm a fish in water. I'm tired of living in this water. I want to live on land. That is why faith is your predominant DNA. That is why faith is a way of life. Is anybody getting this? I said, is anybody getting this? So God imparts into your spirit his righteousness. So why is not it that people don't experience the power of that righteousness? Number one, they haven't truly believed that they are what God said they are. It's the same thing with sickness. People measure their health by how they feel. And as long as you're measuring how well you are by how you feel, the enemy will always trick you. The enemy will always keep you in your feelings so that he can destroy your faith. This is how God explained it to me. If God came down in human form like me, and looked at you eye to eye and said, daughter, you are healed. I want to say that again. 
This is not Sino telling you this. This is not Uncle Sam telling you this. This is not your mama them telling you this. This is not some strange prophet telling you this. This is God coming down in human form. He looks you in the eye and he says, you are healed. Who said it? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the maker of heaven and earth comes down and says, you are healed. Why would you need some evidence? Why? No, I, I'm, take us, you, you all are smart people. Why would you need God to prove what he said? Heaven and earth will pass away. But not one word from the law will pass unto all things. I have exalted your word even above my own name. So this is what we do. We say, well, God, I hear what you're saying, but my faith is in how I feel. So the enemy smacks you. Boom! Ah! Ah! I'm not healed. Pray for me. Pray for me. Call the church. Call the church. Let them pray. The church will pray you into your grave. Yes, they will. Those people who console you when you get sick, they're the first ones that will bury you. They will bury you alive. I thought you said you believed what he said. So why is it that what he said shouldn't be more powerful than how you feel? God is not a man that he should lie. He looks at Abraham with nothing in him, on him, to validate, authenticate what God said. It made no difference to God. He said, if I made you the father of nations, I don't care what your present circumstance looks like. I have made you a father of many nations. So I see this happening in healing schools all the time where people measure how healed they are by how they feel. If they feel better, their, their healing is getting better. If they feel worse, oh Lord, we need to pray harder. The Bible says, let him act in faith, nothing wavering. For a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. He that wavered is, is like the wave of the sea that is moved to and fro. Let not that man think he shall receive anything from the Lord. So with the heart, man believeth. So I use the organ, and this is what I'm going to teach uh, uh, this coming Sunday night. How do you assess all things by faith? Everything in the kingdom is assessed by faith. Salvation, by faith. Healing, by faith. Holiness, by faith. Sanctification, by faith. Believe it. Believe it. The ultimate man, Jesus, has already accomplished it. He has fulfilled the law for righteousness. He's the epitome. He has fulfilled it. He has pleased God. And what you need to focus on is your union with him. So that the life of the vine can flow through the branches. The greatest responsibility every believer has is to enjoy the presence of God. Think about it this way. If you're married here, say yeah. yeah. Your yeah shows something, something going on in your marriage. <laughs> Take a look at marriage. What brings two people together? What brings two people together at first? The very love that they're experiencing between two, each other. At the moment of that experience, nothing else matters. Nobody has to go to a special class to learn how to communicate. That only happens when there's a problem in the house. Now you got to go to a special university to learn how to talk right. <laughs> when two people were in love, no, no, you can talk for nine hours. And you don't care about what the cost of your phone bill will be that week. Why? Because you're in love. The bond between the two of you is strong. So even when your wife does things you don't like, 
you just excuse it, baby. I love you. I love you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's just keep going on. <laughs> when your husband does things that agitate you. Yeah, I love you anyway, baby. I love you anyway. Let's just keep going on. But when that bond becomes weak, you turn more hills into mountains. When the core of your relationship is weak, everything always appears to be a problem. But when you're in love, 50% of your problem is solved. The other 50, you always address it from a place of strength. It's the same thing with your relationship with Jesus. When the core is weak, all his promises come across like a fairy tale. That's not working for me. That's not working for me. The core is weak. If the branch abides in the vine, you don't have to ask the vine to live his life. He knows how to live his life through the branches. In fact, it is not the duty of the branch to bear the fruit. That's the duty of the vine. Even though he bears it through you, the branch, that is not your responsibility. Our responsibility is in the abiding. The greatest call to which you have been called is to enjoy his presence. And it's in the enjoyment of that presence that all that he has accomplished becomes your actual experience. See, we've complicated this whole thing. And so we start out in the spirit and we want to end it up in the flesh. Jesus has pleased the father on your behalf. Accept it. Have you even accepted it? You know, it takes time to accept it. It takes time for that truth to finally sink in. The Bible says it finally dawned on David that he was king. It has to dawn on you that he has pleased. There is nothing else you can do. There is no amount of offering you can do to make God love you more. He loved you through what Christ did on the cross. I said he loved you through what Christ did on the cross. The problem is you have not settled it. You, you haven't. So the strife continues. I got to please God my own way. I got to please God my own way. Uh -uh. Jesus did it for you. I say Jesus did it for you. Church, I say Jesus did it for you. Jesus did it for you. Righteousness by faith. Come on, everybody, lift up one hand towards heaven. Thank him tonight. He's done it for you. He did it all for you. Church, hear this. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. Let the struggle cease. Let the struggle cease. I say, let the struggle, let the striving cease. I feel a, a very precious wind flowing through the house right now. A breath of God flowing through here. I feel like there are so many of you. You are struggling to please him. You are crying out to please him. Something in your soul is still crying out. I got good news for you. There is a man by the name Jesus Christ. The son of the living God. He has done it for you. So I command the chains. That are the chains of confusion, the chains of chaos, the, the chains of commotion, the chains of crisis, the chains of darkness, the chains that were forged from the pit of hell itself that has kept you in bondage until now. Let those chains lose you. I said, let those chains lose you. I tear down every lie from the pit of hell over your life. Jesus, please them on your behalf. Let the weight of sin, the guilt of sin, the condemnation of sin, let it be lifted from your shoulder right now. In Jesus' mighty name. May God bring you to the place of fully agreeing that it's done. Why am I not experiencing the power to whom... Uh, the Bible says to whom? Who shall believe our news? Who will believe our report? Until you believe the report, the power of God will not be revealed. Isaiah 53, 1. Who had believed our report? To whom is the arm of God or the hand of God or the power of God revealed? So if God is going to reveal his power, somebody needs to believe the report. Do I have any believers in the house tonight? 
Those of you watching online, do we have any believers on the, on the, in the house tonight? Lord, I am what you say I am. And I'm going to marinate on this. I'm going to settle on this. I don't care if it takes me a day, two days, one week, the next 30 days. I'm going to marinate right here. I'm going to settle this in my soul. I'm going to settle this in my spirit. I'm going to allow the Lord to establish this in my soul. I am righteous. I said I am righteous. How did it happen? I just put my faith in the one who did it for me. I just placed my faith because I can't do this in my own strength. I cannot do this in my own effort. I cannot, I don't have what it takes to please God. Even if I trusted the last 15 seconds of my life, I, I couldn't trust myself to make it to heaven. So I put my trust in the one who has done it for me. Lord, I pray for everybody watching online, everybody in the house here tonight. Lord, thank you for lifting the weight. Behold the lamb. Come on, you got to spend just a second here. Look at the lamb. Behold the lamb. Behold the lamb. Behold the lamb that has taken away your sins. Behold him. Look at him. He's taking it away. Lord, we give you all the praise and all the glory for what you've done here tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. I don't know who has been accused by the enemy of something you've done, something you've done in your life, some horrendous things, some sinful things, something, and the accuser of the brethren has come accusing you right now. May the blood of Jesus speak for you. May the blood of Jesus remind you. Even if the righteous fall seven times, they'll rise again seven times. It's not over. So, Lord, we give you all the praise and all the glory. Come on, church, one more time. Lift up those hands and help me thank him tonight. Help me thank him tonight. In Jesus' name. And everybody says a powerful amen. amen. Let's shout a powerful amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. This coming Sunday, we're going to continue along this series. You have to be patient. Let's build on it. I promise you at the end of this series, you will develop a spirit of dominion. But you see, this spirit of guilt and condemnation has to be lifted so you can walk in freedom. Can somebody say hallelujah? hallelujah. Say after me, I'm the righteousness of God. The next time you say, say like you know what you're talking about. Say I'm the righteousness of God. Say like you know what you're talking about. Say, I'm the righteousness of God. Don't you let the devil tell you otherwise. I say, don't you let the devil tell you otherwise. Just because you feel pain doesn't mean you're not healed. Just because there's still a weakness doesn't mean you're not righteous. Your weakness is not strong enough to erase your righteousness. When the devil knows you know that truth, he can't trip you again. He can't trip you up again. Can somebody say hallelujah? hallelujah. All right, people, we're going to take our tithes and offerings. Now, some of you have been asking, can I make this church my church? Absolutely. If you want to make this church your church, you are so welcome to make it your home church. Can somebody say hallelujah? hallelujah. I said, if you want to make this your home church, you're so welcome to make it your home church. I believe that in these last days, God is moving in very unconventional ways to reach the lost. Um, I don't know if you know that the fastest growing church in the world right now is in a place called Iran. One of the most dominant Islamic places on the planet, Iran. And man, you're not going to like this, but most of the people that God is using to bring that revival are women. The pastors pastoring these underground churches in Iran are mostly women. Because God has refused to put himself in a box. God is going to use whatever means necessary to him to reach the loss to himself. It doesn't have to fit into your doctrine. It doesn't have to fit into your tradition. It doesn't have to make sense to you. But God is going to accomplish his work. Can somebody say hallelujah? hallelujah. All right. All right. So we have, uh, I think, about four or five ways to give. If we can post that on the screen. Those of you who are online, we have... Several ways that you can give. There are five ways you can give. If you need an envelope, just signify by raising your hand 
um, if you want us to uh, assess your credit card or your debit card, you can also raise your hand. We've got people who will help you process that immediately. It only takes a few uh, uh, seconds to do that. Um, we have online giving. You can go to our website and also give. We have text giving. You can give to 601-401-8070. We have a new way of um, also, it's almost like a cash app, but we're using Vemom. Vemom works as a cash app. All you have to do is download the app, and it's very easy to send money that way. Very, very easy. All you have to do is just decide how much you want to send, and you can send that. Then, of course, if you want to give uh, Kelly and I a personal gift, that's our Vemon uh, um, app there, too. You can send us something. It's just at Pastor Sino, at Pastor Sino, and you can send us whatever God has placed in your heart to give. Can somebody say hallelujah? All right, so we're just going to give you a few seconds to prepare your tithes and offerings. We want to pray over it and then give you one or two announcements and let you all go tonight. Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen. Praise God. All right. Let me just have the musicians back here and uh, the worshipers back here. Let us just um, um, have a good time in the presence of God. Praise the Lord. Those of you online, those are five ways that you can give. Five ways you can give. So... Our online giving at 633movement.com, you see the biggest platform of our giving is called Givelify. You can go to the site right now and give that way on Givelify. You can also um, send us uh, a check via the mail. We've got a PO box that you will see also online. That's one six, what is it? One six, a PO box, one six something something <laughs> once one what now one six six three zero p.o box one six six three zero jackson mississippi three nine two three six all right so you can give that way and by the way if you write us a letter we read your letters can somebody say hallelujah all right we ready for offerings all right now, if you want us to uh, assess your cards, just let us know. We have people who do that. I want to just call my wife, uh, Pastor Kelly, to come and pray over the offering. And then give us uh, a couple announcements that we have. And um, also tomorrow morning, we're going to come up live on the Warrior Nation platform to deliver a word for the season. Our word for the Warrior Nation also in this month is the spirit of dominion. The spirit of dominion. So... What God is saying to M633 and to the Warrior Nation, the same spirit in both ministries, and we thank God for it. All right. Barbara Ward is M633 movement, movement.com, not move.com. Thank you for always typing this in to help us out. It's M633 movement. Actually, it's 633movement.com. That's it. 633movement.com. That's the site. Yeah, but <laughs> Praise the Lord. Got a word. I don't have a word. Is it good now, James? Are we good? All right. We'll try it again. <clears throat> I was praising so hard I lost my voice again. That's a good thing. Y'all good? Y'all have a good time tonight? I had a good time, I'll tell you. I'm glad I wore what I wore. Because I almost was cute tonight. And Crystal had come to the house to do my makeup, and I sent her back home. I said, I don't need any makeup tonight. I came to bless the name of the Lord. I know I can get a little radical. I said, them eyelashes, they're going to come off tonight, so don't even worry about it. Amen? Uh, God is faithful. Let's just take a moment and pray over our tithes and our offerings and everything that you have given. Lord, we are just so deeply grateful for you. So thankful for this word tonight. So thankful for how you've used my husband, Pastor Sino, to deliver such an on-time seasoned word for us. Father, we thank you for every heart they gave tonight, both here in person and the 280 people watching online. And God, we just ask you to increase them even the more, God, because you've given us a mandate to reach one billion souls for Jesus. And that is not a cheap task. And so we thank you right now that everyone who gets behind this mandate, you will give them an abundance 
to sow into this ministry, to sow into this mandate you have given us. We don't take it lightly. So we speak increase into every pocket tonight, into every account tonight. God, give them more than they are even able to spend. For that, God, we, we take you at your word tonight. We cannot outgive you. We can never run out because we are seed sores. And so we bless everyone who came out tonight, Lord. Just be with them and they're coming and they're going. And Lord, give them a financial miracle of the next seven days. I just ask you, just as a special favor, Lord, for them coming out on this Sunday night, give them a financial miracle. That is my prayer tonight. We thank you for answering while we are yet praying. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand here with me for a moment. Um, one of the announcements we wanted to make is on December the 10th, we'll be in LA for a night of prayer. You want to talk about that for a minute? Okay. That's a Tuesday night. We are taking prayer to LA. One thing you said last week, um, that really resonated with my spirit. You were like, we don't care who shows up there. Like it could be two, it could be... <laughs> okay. Maybe it's just for you to talk tonight. Anyway, we were saying it doesn't matter how many people. It's just being obedient to the assignment. Prayer is necessary. Like, you can't do anything without prayer. And so, we're just going to do what God told us to do. Um, and even today, I just, what y'all don't know is that he's going over and spending some time in prayer. Um, about two hours before he comes to service. And so he was inside praying, and I had this weird thing where sometimes I like to sit in my car. I wonder where I got that from, but I like to still pray in my car. And so I said, y'all go on inside. I'm going to stay in the car. And I just cried out to God tonight. And what I feel like I heard the Lord say about church, about prayer, about everything he's called us to do. Number one, he said, focus on me. Have I ever let you down? Ever. Is there ever a time that I didn't bring you through? As I was praising him tonight, he said, I will come through through a burning fire to rescue you. So I just speak to over you tonight. He said, I will literally be that fourth man in the fire. I will come through the fire to snatch you out. But he also said, and I know I heard him, demonstrate me. He said, if you will just demonstrate me, the people will come. So that's what he said. And that's what we're going to continue to do. We are going to focus on him. And we're going to focus on demonstrating him. Because when there's a demonstration of God, when there's a true move of his spirit, there won't be enough room in this room. And that's what we're going to do. Thank you so much. Also, um, another event we have is in January the 2nd to the 4th. This is in Georgia, Cleveland, Georgia, where we have our first of the year uh, camp meeting, our M633 prayer fire camp meeting. And um, we're going to have the one for 2020 in the uh, state of Georgia. And um, we like to begin the year with God. And so, all the information is all on our sites. Go there and check it out. Registrations have already started. There's never been a meeting I know like it. You know, just two nights, three whole days in the presence of God. There's nothing like it. Everybody stays on site, on camp, and we just, we just grind in the Holy Ghost. It's, it's the most beautiful thing. I've seen God do in those uh, three days what most people never experience in a lifetime. So I want to encourage you all, if you start out right, I promise you, you're going to end right. So we are planning big. We've had one of the most beautiful campsites in Georgia uh, called the Wood, Wood, Woodlands. And um, so prepare for that. It's going to be really powerful. Also, um, uh, one more thing. Um, um, I believe that um, we're going to have a, a uh, night service. A Passover night service into the new year. Okay, we're gonna have a Passover night service where we actually enter into the new year in the presence of God. Okay, so we're gonna let you all know about that service. Make sure you get the word out, turn out, and let's go into 2020 in style. Can somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. And you know, by now you know that my eyes is on God, my eyes is not on people. You know, I've, I've pastored so many years to know 
that you have to put your eyes on God, only on God, right? So I've learned that lesson big time. And I'm um, not worried. You know, in no time, this place will be so full of people, there won't even be a place to put people. So I'm not even worried about that. I've already seen the end picture from the beginning. So to God be all the glory for that. Can somebody say amen? amen. All right, guys. Have we given our offerings yet? Yes. Okay. One more thing. Um, my good friend, Pastor Zeno, you all know there's somebody called Zeno here. There's Zeno, there's Bino, there's Gino, there's Dino, there's... I don't know what other knows that I have. So, um, he's got some flyers, and on your way out, just get it on our decks out there. This is called Advancing the Kingdom. I'll be preaching there. Um, Apostle Larry Wilson will be preaching there. Pastor Peter Opata will be preaching there. That's Friday the 15th through the 17th, November, 6.30 p.m. through 8.30 p.m. daily. And then, of course, Sunday morning at 10 a.m., so the information is there at Vine Chapel. We're going to be having a very powerful time in the Holy Spirit that weekend. Again, that's uh, November the 17th through the 19th. And we're going to continue to make this announcement every night here. Um, and so those of you in the area, come out and let's have a great time. So pick up, pick up as many flowers as you can and spread it around. My good friend, Pastor Jason, is here. And uh, I, I love you like a brother, man. I feel like we're a brother from another mother, so... Um, and this is what people need to understand. This church is not competing. We're not in competition with anybody. We want every church to flourish. We want every church to prosper. As long as it's kingdom, I'm all good with it. Can somebody say hallelujah? hallelujah. What God has for you, he has for you. What God has for us, he has for us. Amen. There's enough space in the sky for every bird to spread their wings and fly. Amen. All right, people, let's just stand up and close out in service tonight. All right, just lift up two hands to us, heaven. Father, we thank you for all that you've done here tonight. Lord, I bless the worship team. I bless the people who came from far or near. Some people drove all the way from Hattiesburg to be here tonight. I don't know where else somebody might have drove from, Alabama, Georgia, New Orleans, Vicksburg. Lord, as they plan to leave here tonight, just bless them, keep them safe. They came here in safety, they'll get home in safety. Lord, may this week be our best week yet. Thank you for the spirit of dominion that you're producing within our hearts. Our lives will never be the same. And everybody says a big amen. amen. Make sure you greet two or three people on your way out. We love you so much and God bless you. Uh, we'll be here after service to just chat a bit. So if you want to come talk, I'll be in that direction. I'd love to talk to you and shake your hand. God bless you.